Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be talking about uh, the rotator cuff. Uh, the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles deep inside the shoulder, and it has an important function to stabilize the ball and socket joint and to also help bring the arm uh, up overhead and rotation at the side. The rotator cuff is a common source of pain in many patients. Uh, symptoms can range between just pain, but preserved overhead function and strength, uh, but it can also range all the way to patients with severe pain and weakness with shoulder use, weakness with bringing the arm up overhead or reaching away, uh, or even complete loss of overhead motion to the shoulder. Problems with the rotator cuff are also commonly associated with other issues like arthritis of a small joint here called the acromioclavicular joint and uh, pain and inflammation related to the uh, biceps tendon as it runs into the shoulder. The rotator cuff uh, or problems with the rotator cuff uh, commonly fall along a spectrum uh, known as tendinopathy. And so things might start off with just some inflammation in the shoulder, uh, but progressive wear and tear of the tendon uh, with use or with aging can lead to uh, tearing of the rotator cuff. You can have partial tearing where the tendon is only partially torn uh, off the bone uh, and you can have tears where the tendon is completely torn off the bone. You can have tears that are small that might involve only one tendon and you can have tears that involve all the tendons in the shoulder which of course could result in a lot of functional loss. Treatment for the rotator cuff commonly uh, is non-surgical, but there are uh, a lot of things that need to go into that decision. So an MRI is typically ordered at some point and is really helpful to really precisely uh, define the extent of the problem with the rotator cuff, which helps us make a, a good uh, treatment decision. So uh, in this video, we will be talking about the anatomy of the rotator cuff uh, and some of the function, and hopefully you guys uh, find this video helpful. Uh, I did want to point out one other uh, a common problem that we might see with rotator cuff uh, injuries are traumatic tears. Um, we just discussed uh, de the degenerative tr uh, process of uh, rotator cuff pathology, but some patients will have an acute injury to the shoulder, uh, which results in an acute tear, meaning that they previously were functioning well, they did not have any problems with the rotator cuff, they had an injury, and then as a result, the tendon tore itself off the bone. Um, this often happens in patients over the age of 40 or so, and uh, will commonly happen in patients uh, in that age range or above who actually dislocate their shoulder and this uh, often will result in a tear of the rotator cuff. And so in those situations uh, that needs to be addressed uh, promptly, often with an MRI uh, and um, a, a prompt uh, orthopedic evaluation to uh, make sure that the right treatment decision is made. In this video, we are going to be talking about the rotator cuff. To help get you oriented, this is the shoulder model and we're looking straight at an individual shoulder. This is the arm bone running down towards the elbow and hand. This is the collarbone, also known as the clavicle. And this is the shoulder blade right here. The shoulder blade is made up into a couple parts. The first is the spine of the scapula the acromion, which is right here, and then the body of the scapula is this big flat part. You can also see it in this area. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles. The first muscle is the subscapularis. It attaches in the front of the scapula right here and runs towards the front of the shoulder. It attaches to the front of the arm bone in this location. This muscle helps you rotate your arm inward towards your belly or behind your back. The second rotator cuff muscle is the supraspinatus, which attaches up here on this shoulder blade, and it runs towards the top of the arm bone and attaches right here at the top. 
This muscle helps you with overhead shoulder motion. The next rotator cuff muscle attaches in the back of the shoulder blade, and this is called the infraspinatus, and it runs outward towards and attaches to sort of the back and the top portion of the arm bone in this area. This muscle helps you rotate your arm out uh, externally away from your body. And finally, the fourth rotator cuff muscle is this smaller one here called the teres minor, and it runs outward and attaches towards the back of the arm. This one also helps you rotate your arm externally. The rotator cuff is essentially, like it says, like its name, is a cuff of uh, muscle tendon unit that attaches to the arm bone uh, completely surrounding the ball and socket joint. It helps with shoulder motion, rotation, and helps stabilize the ball inside the socket. 